what I'm saying? In order to even ask the question, does God exist, requires God, because you're using knowledge to ask the question. Like if I was to say to you, Bill, I'm an A-wordist. I don't believe words exist. What would you say to me? I don't believe words exist, Bill. What's that? Just spoke. Exactly! You're like, dude, you're using words. What I'm saying to you is what breathing and air are together. In order to argue against God, I'm assuming God exists to even make my argument. Because you can't account for the knowledge in your head without God. He's the precondition for intelligible thinking. That's the problem. So guys, here's what he says. This is heavy. He says he's made himself plain to everybody. They've suppressed the truth in unrighteousness. That means... If we look what that means, that basically means we've sinned. Now, I know it's an old, maybe an old-fashioned word, but it just means we've violated God's law. See, on your oh, hearts, it says in Romans 2, is a knowledge of right and wrong. wrong. Is it wrong to murder? Yeah. How do you know that? Social norms. So do you think that's a societal construct, or is that is that just an innate understanding? Well, yeah, it's like... know that. Now you understand morality is not material. How does someone who's purely a materialist account for something immaterial? God is, is the very source and starting point for morality. He actually says that he's written on our hearts a knowledge of right and wrong via our conscience, guys. Everyone walking these streets knows right from wrong. Now do they obey their conscience? No. That's the problem. See, what I do is I violate my conscience. I know it's wrong to lie, but I lie, and you've done that too, Phil, right? You know it's wrong to steal, but you've probably downloaded music you didn't pay for, right? You know it's wrong to blaspheme or use God's name in vain, but you text OMG. That's a form of blasphemy. You know it's it's probably right to thank God for your breath and for your family and for your schooling. You don't even pray for your food before you eat it. You see that? So what we've done is we've suppressed the truth of God by sinning against Him. And what he's going to do, this is tough, when we stand before him, whether that's five minutes, five years, fifty years, when you stand before God, guys, the Bible says you'll be, you'll be without excuse for denying him, because he's told you he exists in a general way, creation of your conscience. But he, you suppress that truth, and you are guilty of sinning against the God you do know exists. You see that? So you're without excuse. Welcome. Everyone's with... That's why the Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Because he's revealed himself. Pretty heavy, eh? Now guys, if that was the end of the story, everyone walking these streets has sinned against God. God is so good and just and righteous, he must punish sin wherever it's found. His wrath abides on people because they've rejected him. They haven't even thanked him. You are condemned already. I'm not condemning you. The Bible says we're condemned already because we've rejected the Son of God. So if that was the end of the story, guys, everyone is headed for the same destination. But here's what I want to underscore. Rightfully so. Because you, we've rejected God. But God is merciful. This is so, so reassuring. God is rich in mercy. God is patient. God's wanting none to perish. What does that mean? God has extended mercy righteously. See, guys, the, the difficulty is, my friend Ted here, if Ted got shot by someone right now, hopefully it doesn't happen, Ted's lying on the pavement. We all see the crime. We drag the perpetrator to a good and just judge in a courtroom. If that judge let the guy go just because the perp was, was sorry, would that be justice? No. We would say that is not justice. Why? Because there's been no sacrifice to satisfy justice. Do you know how... Sorry, just hold that thought. Hold that thought. Do you know how God satisfied His justice but demonstrated mercy for you guys? Is that? With His Son. Now you know this. Dude, you've got more knowledge than most people got. You know what that means? You're accountable for more knowledge. This is getting heavy for you, Bill. You still want to stick? Dude, I, I appreciate you. Seriously. Let me finish up. This is so, so important, bro. Because the truth is, is that you've suppressed the truth of God. You're guilty of sin. If you die tonight, you do not have the right standing with God you need. You perish under God's wrath for all eternity. Hell is not the absence of God. It's very much the presence of God minus His grace and goodness. It's God's justice. That's a frightening thing, man. God sent His Son into this world. God enters His own creation, the second person of the Trinity, in the person of Jesus Christ. Fully man, fully God. I know that flips your, your lid to me too. I don't get that. 
but he confirmed it by signs, wonders, and miracles. He was, as Josephus said, he was a guy of, of great power, right? Tacitus, Thallus, Phlegon, these ancient historians write about this Jesus guy. He was dead. Isn't there something about this guy? This was why he came. He went to a cross. On that cross, he took on the not just the beating of the Romans. That's one thing. He took on the wrath, the anger, the justice, the justice of his own father. The sky goes black. Jesus says, it is finished. That means at the appointed time, Jesus bore the wrath in full. Like, like a napkin soaks up water, Jesus absorbed the wrath and anger of God for sinners. Pretty heavy. He dies the death required as payment for sin. But he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he comes back from the dead. He's seen by like 500 people, who most of whom died telling this story. Right? So I, I, I mean, this is pretty simple for a guy in London, Ontario. But he, he comes back from the dead and he says, Phil, it's not just enough to know this. There is a historical Jesus. That's ridiculous that people would even question that. But to respond to this message, you don't just believe. You must repent. Turn from your sin. Turn away from forsaken. And put your faith in Jesus Christ alone to save you, man. Not your good looks, not your schooling, not your finances. None of that cuts it. Because when you stand before God, today, tomorrow, 10 years, 20 years, if you do not have your sins paid in full, you pay them yourself because God requires justice. That's how justice works. So here's the trade-off. In this life, you repent or you breathe your last. You turn from your sin. God gives you His right standing through the blood of Christ when you stand before God. He says, Phil, this man paid your fine. You've been declared righteous. You can go to heaven on His goodness and not your own. If you reject this, God will demand payment. The problem is, is you're corrupt like I'm corrupt. You pay for eternity in hell because you are not good enough for heaven and neither am I. But because I'm forgiven, the Lamb of God took away my sins. Now I can stand before God justified, declared righteous before God. Not that I'm perfect. But when I die, God will look at me through the shed blood of His Son and Jesus paid my fine. I broke the law and He paid my fine. That's the good news of the gospel. You notice I didn't say, go to church. Just go to church, man. What are you doing? Did I say that to you? No, I didn't. Did I say, hey, just pray a prayer. Just got to pray. Didn't say that. You just got to be a good person. That's not going to work either. The only way is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. That's it, man. But the good thing is, is when, when my heart changes, when God takes my heart of stone and gives me a new one, now I love Him and I love people and I want to hang and chat and share this message. Now only do I... Do I, I, I go to church, but I'm a pastor of a church. Because God has given me a love for people and for His Word and for, for sharing this message. You had a question. Do you remember it? Well, <laughs> well, you're basing everything on the Bible. How do you know? Like, yeah, I, I, like, I was going to say, like, how do you know that the facts like, is true? Yeah. Some, a person wrote it. God didn't write the Bible. How do you know that? How do you know that God wrote it? Yeah, how do you know God wrote it? I'll tell you the answer. That you're not going to like it, though. Okay. Have I been honest with you to the best of my, my ability so far? Have, have I been honest with you at least? Based on what I know to be true? How do I know that the Bible's true? You ready for this? Because God told me. That's it. Now, I could, I, guys, I could get into the manuscripts, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I could get into copying. I could get into the scribes and... and all, I could get into prophecy, and, and you, you, you know what? The problem is, the things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. You're not, you're just going to, you have a, a worldview that's different than mine. If I say to you, let's just test this out, Phil, I say, here's how I know the Bible's true. 2,800, thus saith the Lord, 2,800 prophecies, all have come true to the exact detail, except for the ones about the future return of Christ. Does that convince you the Bible's true? No, it doesn't. It doesn't work, does it? Let me tell you why it doesn't work. When Jesus rose from the dead, he's standing in front of the people that denied him. He's got holes in his hands. He's eating fish with these guys. He lets Thomas touch them. Would that make you believe? Well, you'd think it would, but you know what it says in the Bible? But some doubted. What? Because unless God grants you repentance leading to an knowledge of the truth, you will never understand this, dude. That's why the gospel is the only thing that can change your understanding. But if I can get back to your question, can you imagine... I'm saying, this book I hold was written through men, through men, God used men as his instruments, it's inspired, men wrote the book, God used men to write it. Can you imagine if I said to you, 
that the creator of all the universe, the all-powerful, all-holy, just judge of all, he needs me to stamp his papers to prove that he exists. What kind of a God is that? That's not a God, that's an idol. Because God says, you know I exist. You're just suppressing the truth. Now I will say, he has to tell you the truth of this is, is what it is. But in a general way, he's, he's showing you guys he exists. Does that sort of answer your question? I know you don't like that answer, do you? <laughs> but dude, that's the answer, man. The only way you can know this book is that God tells you it's true. That doesn't mean I drank the Kool-Aid. That's not what I mean. I mean the things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. The Bible says you guys are walking dead in sin and in darkness. Second, second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 4, it says that, that uh, what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is born with ourselves as, as your servants for Jesus' sake. What's good? It says, but God who said, let light shine out of darkness, a reference to creation, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God to the face of Jesus Christ. Here's what that means. Until God shines the light of knowledge of who he is into your hearts, you are dead in sin and you're pure. You won't understand or believe. But the only way you guys can be saved is if we preach the gospel, which is the good news, which I've tried to do. You guys have been so kind. I haven't, I haven't picked you off. No, no, no. I respect you guys. I want to just, I want, I want to say this very clearly. I'm not here to judge you guys. I'm not here to be a jerk. I'm here to try to reason with folks because I, I, I really know, believe, understand that God has revealed Himself such that we do know things for certain. You guys know things for certain. The problem is, it's not that you guys don't count. You just can't account for your count. Because even to think intelligibly requires the Christian worldview because it's true. My card, guys. That's a church I pastor here in the city. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man.